Hello, geometry students. Uh, welcome to geometry. I want to uh, introduce um, in this video not only um, the, what this lesson is about, but also I want to just uh, take maybe 30 seconds to talk about the formatting and how you can uh, identify and, and locate certain things uh, within the Google Drive. So first thing I want to um, direct your attention to is this uh, index right here. Okay, and there's a there's a certain organization to my madness. <laughs> so this U1AOO, okay, this is the index of the lesson, which is also the index for everything that you will need to find. Um, uh, it's an identifier, okay? So what does the U stand for? The U stands for the unit. Uh, so we're currently in unit one. A stands for the agenda. And then zero, zero, okay? The, 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 the numbers following letter A will tell you which lesson we are on. So we're on lesson zero, zero, which sounds kind of weird, I know. And the reason for why I'm, I'm calling this lesson um, zero, zero is because this lesson you should have already um, had some understanding uh, before entering uh, this course. So it's, it's kind of a prerequisite uh, understanding, okay, uh, in order for you to move on into geometry. So, which is why I'm calling the zero zero. You should have already known, um, understood this. So, um, by uh, in in future lessons, okay. So, in the lesson following this, you're going to see U one A zero one, okay, and then one after that, U one A zero two, and so forth. Sometimes I may have um, smaller degradation, um, smaller gradations, okay, of the lessons. Maybe I may call it lesson one A versus uh, lesson one B, okay. Um, if uh, if there is a need for um, if, if there is a need to distinguish between various lessons, and then immediately following the um, the index is this uh, statement, which is the learning target of the lesson. So hopefully by the end of every lesson, okay, you should be able to answer this question, or not this question, but you should be able to um, say the statement. Okay, so by the end of the lesson, you should be able to say, I can explain every step in isolating a variable by using a statement and reason chart. And I'm going to flip. Um, so after the lesson, okay, by the end of the lesson, towards the end of the lesson, okay, what you're going to find is uh, I will list out um, a set of like prescribed assignments for you guys to, to, to work on. So um, and and these assignments, okay, can be found within the Google Drive. So if you type into the Google Drive U1A00, you should then be able to identify uh, all the files associated with this lesson. So not only the video, but the slides and the Google Doc or the PDFs, okay? Everything and anything that is associated with that index, okay? So without further ado, I am going to go into the lesson now and just talk about how we can isolate a variable by using a statement and reason chart. All right, so for us to be able to isolate a variable, we have to have some understanding of properties of numbers, okay? So um, it's, it's like saying, like, if you wanna manipulate something, okay, just like in art, if you wanna manipulate, let's say metal, if metal is the, the, the medium to which you are working in, okay, you have to understand the properties of metal. You have to know how to bend it, you have to know how to shape it. So same thing could be said about working with uh, isolating variables uh, in math, okay? We need to understand the properties of numbers. So what are the properties of numbers? The properties of numbers include reflexive, symmetric, transitive, substitution, commutative, associative, and distributive, okay? So we will be using this um, to isolate the variables. Pause the video for a moment to see if you can recall what the properties are, um, and, um, and then we'll go over it, all right? So if you thought about this for a little bit and you pause the video, let's go over right now, okay? So what exactly is a reflexive property? Well, all these properties, okay, believe it or not, they are defined just like the way that they sound. I have the reflexive property here, okay? And what exactly is the reflexive property? I hear the word reflexive. So reflexive means you're looking at yourself. So therefore, A is gonna equal to A, okay? And why do we need to know this? Well, that's because when we're adding two things uh, or subtracting two numbers from both sides, we need to apply the reflexive property, okay? The next property is symmetric, and I see the word symmetry here, 
Okay, so what exactly does that mean? Well, if I have two things and they're equal to one another, the symmetry is we can reverse that order of equality. Okay, we can say if A is equal to B, then therefore B must equal to A. Next, we have the transitive property or the substitution property. There is a very subtle difference between these two, but my, um, so which is why I'm putting them together and which is why, um, well, I, for, for me in this course, uh, if you use either one of them, okay, in my opinion, they're the same exact same thing. So what exactly is the substitution property? Because I think that word is a little more accessible uh, over transitive. So if I have A is equal to something, in this case B, and I'm telling you also that B is therefore also equal to C, then based on the transitive property, or if you want to think of it as a substitution, I may substitute B in with C in that first statement and say A will equal to C. That's a transitive property or substitution, okay? If you use either one of them, that's fine. Personally, I use substitution over transitive uh, like 99.999999% of the time, all right? Commutative, what exactly is a commutative property? The commutative property, okay, sounds again, or is defined just like the way that it sounds. I see the word commute, okay, in that word. So when you're commuting, what are you doing exactly? You're moving around. So the commutative property, okay, if I have A plus B, okay, I can move that summation around. I can say that instead of writing A plus B, I can say, oh, it's really the same thing as B plus A. The commutative property is applicable not just for addition, but also for multiplication. If I have A times B, I can therefore say that it's equal to B times A. I can move that multiplication around. Next, I have the associative property. And again, these properties, okay, they set, they're, they're defined just like the way that they are sound. When you hear the word associative property, I hear the word associate, okay? And to associate with something, that means you are part of a group. So this is really a grouping property, okay? The associative property, again, is applicable over addition and multiplication here. So if I have two different things, okay, uh, where they're being added to one another and certain groups are placed together, I can regroup these summations, okay, using the associative property. And instead of having B plus C being grouped, I can then therefore group B, A plus B. Why is this important? Well, that's because sometimes in, in math, in algebra, in geometry, okay, we need to prove certain things. And by way of proving something, we need to communicate that thought, okay? So in communicating that thought, we sometimes will need to regroup certain ideas and logic, okay, which is why this is needed. So commutative property is not only applicable in addition, but it's also applicable over multiplication. So I can regroup certain numbers that are being multiplied by one another and the uh, and the quantity okay is preserved lastly i have the distributive property what exactly is the distributive property well the distributive property is um is actually applicable over not just addition but over addition as well so i want to um i want to write this out in a moment but when you're distributing something okay it is applicable over addition as well as over subtraction. The distributive property is only applicable over addition and subtraction and not over multiplication. If, if, you, if, uh, if I may direct your attention to um, this line right here, notice, okay, A times B times C, right, A times B times C is not the same as AB times AC. Notice that the A does not get distributed over the multiplication there, okay? So it's only applicable only over addition and subtraction. All right, so now having the theory being spelled out, let's talk about some actual problems. All right, so now I have this. You're given that Y is equal to 1 3rd X plus 2, and you need to prove that x is equal to negative 6 plus 3y. So the statement, the format of this problem looks slightly different. It looks slightly different from what you're used to. In the past, probably in algebra, okay, you are only asked to show 
that x is equal to negative 6 plus 3y. But here I'm asking you to prove. They're essentially saying the same things, okay? We're asking you, all the math teachers are doing, they're asking you to repeat the same kind of ideas, okay? So in you showing that x is equal to negative 6 plus 3y in that work that you do, you are proving it. The only slight difference is we need you, I need you to now spell out what are the reasons, okay, for those, for the transitions in steps. So let's take a look, okay? So this is the formatting that I need you to, to take part in. So I have, what, what we're going to create is what's called a statement and reason chart. And you're going to use this. We are going to use this uh, throughout the year in uh, performing what's called geometric proofs. And typically they're, um, they're formatted in this way, where on the left side we have statements, where we're making a statement, and then on the right side we're giving a reason, okay? So on the left right now, on line one, I have y is equal to one third x plus two. Why does y equal to one third x plus two? No particular reason. It's given to you, which is why the reason is that's the starting point. This is the given, okay? So what would you do to find out what would your next step be to, find, to figure out that x is indeed equal to negative 6 plus 3y? Well, probably what you would do is you would, well, actually, I'm going to ask you to pause the video. I'm going to ask you to try and figure out what those statements should be that you are making here, okay? If you thought, if you, if you think that the, the first thing to do is to subtract the 2 over, you're absolutely right. We're going to subtract 2 from both sides. Now, in order for us to do that, though, you are actually implicitly doing the following. You are actually saying, well, 2 is equal to 2. So, therefore, if 2 does, in fact, equal to 2, you're, you are actually applying, you are actually applying the reflexive property. And... Once you have this statement in place, your third step, pause, pause the, um, the video for a moment and think about this. Your next statement should be to add, subtract, multiply, or divide. Well, it should definitely be to subtract. We're going to subtract both sides, okay, by that statement there, okay? We're going to perform a subtraction. We're subtracting which two lines in particular? We are subtracting lines we are subtracting lines L1 minus L2, okay? So we're subtracting those lines, okay? And then the result is we're going to end up with line 3 there. The next step, okay, um, we have one-third, okay, happening right now, okay? That's being multiplied by X, okay, on the right-hand side. What do you think we should do? Pause the video and think about what we should do to solve that X is equal to negative 6 plus 3Y. We're going to, we need to multiply both sides by 3. And in order for us to multiply both sides by 3, again, we need to apply the reflexive property. The reflexive property, the reflexive property here, okay, is needed because we need to multiply both sides by 3. So we need to have this statement in place in order for us to use this. So what are we going to do? We're going to say, oh, we're going to multiply both sides by 3 and 3. So how are we going to do that? We are going to take L3 and we're going to multiply it by L4. L3 times L4. We're multiplying both sides of those equations together. And remember, our goal is to figure out that negative 6 plus 3y, I mean, x is equal to negative 6 plus 3y. We are almost done, okay? The next step, we are going to apply the distributive property. We are going to um, distribute this step now. Let's distribute the previous step, okay? Now, it doesn't quite look like what we're trying to prove, does it? Okay, we need to do a little bit of manipulating. So what, we, what you should say after this, we're going to apply the commutative property to rearrange negative 6 plus 3y here so that I have this. Notice that the arrangement, okay, of the addition has now been switched. So the commutative property is in place. And then the last thing to do, we're going to apply the symmetric property as the final step. So just to be clear, and I was a little sloppy when I put this together, what you should have for the subtraction, we are subtracting lines 1 and 2, and we're multiplying lines 3 and lines 4, okay, in those two steps there. All right, so that's how we can solve for x 
and uh, by applying all the various properties of numbers. Let's take a look at another example. I have this given statement, 4 times x minus 3 is uh, plus 2z is equal to 2, and I'm telling you that x is equal to 2. Now we need to prove that z is equal to 3. So to start, we need to now create a statement and reason chart. So the statement and reason chart will look like so. And again, these two facts are givens. We need to show that z is equal to 3. In order for us to do this, pause the video and see if you can think for yourself what you have to do here to, uh, to show that z, to prove that z is actually equal to 3. If your inkling is telling you, if, you, if you're inclined to say that, oh, we need to perform a substitution, you are absolutely right. We're going to perform a substitution. We're substituting what into where? We're substituting lines, uh, line 2 into line 1. Okay, we're placing line 2 into line 1, so therefore we get this statement. So what would the next step be? Well, let's try, well, pause the video if you, if you want to think about this, okay? What you should do next is we're going to distribute this. Or actually not distribute, we're going to perform that operation, right? Perform PEMDAS, my mistake. We're gonna perform PEMDAS. So we're gonna do two minus three, and what exact, what property is that of numbers? It's, we're subtracting. We're performing a subtraction there. Uh, and that simplification leads us to four times negative one plus two z is equal to two. We're gonna multiply four and negative one to get negative four plus two z is equal to two. Finally, how do we bring that negative four over to the other side? Pause the video and see if you can think for yourself. If you think that we need to perform, a, we need to put in place a reflexive property, you are absolutely right. And with that in mind, we will then need to add lines five and six. So we're gonna add lines five and line six together. So addition of line five and line six. And when we do, we have 2z is equal to 6. Finally, we need to solve for z, yes? We need to divide both sides by 2. So by, by making that statement, we're actually saying two things. We're saying that 2 is equal to 2. And finally, we're dividing lines 7 and 8 to end up with z is equal to 3. So therefore, just to be clear, we have subtraction here. We're subtracting. We're, well, I'm sorry, not subtracting. We have... The uh, addition, we have the addition here. This is, we, we are adding lines five and six. And we are dividing lines seven and eight. To end up with z is equal to three. And that's it. Thanks for watching.